Are you growing your Phalaenopsis orchids in organic media? Excellent. Is your climate or grow space blessed with high humidity, average humidity, or low humidity? Perfect. I'm going to cover the watering requirements for these wonderful orchids in all of those conditions, but wait. Are you growing your Phalaenopsis orchids in inorganic media? That is excellent as well. And is your climate or grow space blessed with high humidity, average humidity, or low humidity? Perfect. I will cover the watering requirements for those conditions and variables as well. As we have a lot of different circumstances to consider, let's get right into it. Oh, and by the way, I'm also going to address the little cutie patootie mini phalaenopsis and their watering needs because those little cuties are in a little bit of a league of their own. So please give this video a thumbs up and take a moment to subscribe to the channel for that added support. Thank you so much. The watering requirements for phalaenopsis orchids will be broken down into three different humidity averages. 80% represents high humidity, 60% represents average, and 30% represents dry. With those numbers, numbers in mind, let's start with the most popular substrate of choice when it comes to Phalaenopsis orchids and that is bark or a bark mix of sorts. In a humid climate, you will want to have your Phalaenopsis orchids in chunky bark, no less than two centimeters in size. This will encourage a fast wet dry cycle, which growing in organic media is what it is all about with this genus. The high humidity will slow the drying out of the pot a little, but the fact that there's so much air around the roots because of the chunky bark, along with the airflow, the roots will have a great balance of time to absorb nutrients versus drying out too quickly. With an average of 60% humidity, you can use chunky bark with a little bit of sphagnum moss on the outer edges of the pot to help out with water retention and slow down the evaporation process. Or you can go with straight up medium sized bark of anything less than two centimeters and no moss at all. When it comes to 30% humidity climates, you will want to go with a ratio of 50% seedling bark and 50% sphagnum moss for your ideal mix. And yes, the moss should also be on the outer edges of the pot. The reason I mention where the moss should be located within the bark mix is if you were to require a little bit more water retention in the pot, it is so that the inside of the pot doesn't stay wet longer than the outside. Always remember that when it comes to a wet dry culture with orchids that the lower third interior of the pot will stay wet longer than the rest of the pot and with that you may see your roots nice and silvery, you may see your bark dry on the outside, however without condensation to help you out you you may not see that the inner lower third of your pot is still wet and proceed to water. So moss mixed with bark throughout the pot is not always such a good idea when it comes to controlling and even drying out of the pot. Alternatively, in a humid climate, in order to achieve a wet dry cycle using inorganic media, I highly recommend river pebbles or any other stone that will not hold on to water anything with a smooth surface. The sizes of the stones apply just the same as was the case with bark sizes for the different humidity levels. With average humidity conditions, consider adding a little bit of lava rock to the outer perimeter of your pot. This will behave in a similar manner to sphagnum moss. Water will evaporate on the exposed side of the lava rock, but the porous consistency of the lava rock as it faces into the pot will remain damp for a little longer. Should your climate be very dry, lava rock is the way to go because it allows for the moisture to remain in the pot for a little longer before it evaporates. And in this instance, use chunky lava rock throughout the entire pot. With the recommended media mixes in place, you will need to water your Phalaenopsis orchids as often as it needs it based on what the orchid is doing. If in active growth, even without growing leaves, let your pot dry out, but not over an extended period of time because actively growing roots and root tips need to be encouraged to grow. Back in the day when I was growing in organic media and clay pots, my media dried out very quickly during the warmer months of the year. And no matter the size of the bark, I was watering my Phalaenopsis orchids every second day. During the cooler months of the year, that dropped to once a week, but it could also be every 10 days, as my humidity would be much, much higher during the cooler months of the year. In a controlled environment, however, you will not have these watering fluctuation extremes. So just let your pot dry out, wait two more days, and then water again. And please note that not all your Phalaenopsis orchids are going to be absorbing water the same way. Some may be thirstier, which 
which I will get to, and some may stay wet for longer. So while we, well, at least I do, like to have our orchids in groupings to make our lives easier, it may not be the right time to water one single Phalaenopsis out of the whole gaggle, because it just so happens that pot is still damp at the lower third. Also, you may have some orchids in clay pots and some in plastic pots. The different materials also respond differently when it comes to evaporation. A plastic pot, even with ventilation holes all around the perimeter, will stay wet for longer as opposed to a clay pot that allows for quick evaporation. Having covered the watering variables for a wet-dry cycle in organic and to a degree inorganic media, I want to just quickly say thank you to Thorns and Roses for requesting this video. I appreciate you trusting me with this question and hope that the information provided is already proving to be of some help. Now moving on to the watering variables of Phalaenopsis orchids in semi-hydroponics because yes, that is also an option and it is one that I grow mine in exclusively with the exception of a summer bloomer that I have mounted. When it comes to semi-hydroponics, you need to keep two things in mind and they work hand in hand. First of all, can you keep your ambient average temperature above 20 degrees Celsius? If so, you are good to grow. If not, then I advise you to not use LECA in a semi-hydroponic setup because these warm growing orchids, the evaporative cooling, that can cause issues that would not otherwise happen if the temperatures are always steady above 20 degrees Celsius. In the event that your temperatures do drop below 20 degrees Celsius, you can still grow your Phalaenopsis in inorganic media in a semi-hydroponic setup using lava rock. With both LECA and lava rock, it does not matter if your setup has the classic two drainage holes at the sides of the pot with a reservoir at the bottom or as in my case self-watering with a mask that provides the reservoir at the bottom of the mask and a wicking material draws the water from there up into the pot. Know that with only lecker in your pot you should never let your pot dry out. While lava rock is ideal for a wet dry cycle as mentioned previously leaving lecker to dry out because you prefer to cultivate your phalaenopsis in that way can be a detriment to the roots. The reason being, LECA is a wicking agent and it pulls moisture from one bead to the other and up and up and up it goes. This characteristic when the LECA is left to dry out will pull moisture from the roots causing the roots to desiccate. Now, disclaimer in high humidity climate. The LECA will stay damp for a very long time between waterings because LECA will also pull moisture from the air. So your reservoir may be empty within a couple of days, but the LECA itself won't dry out ever. Please water your orchid as and when the reservoir is empty because without the water there, there won't be enough moisture for the roots to draw from just by using what the ambient air provides. Make it rain in that pot, so to speak. When it comes to the average humidity and low humidity conditions with LECA, you will see signs of the surface of the media drying out while the LECA inside the pot is consistently wet or damp. In order to protect root tips growing at the surface from not being desiccated by the LECA as it can and possibly will pull moisture from them if they don't get into the pot quickly enough, I use some sphagnum moss to keep the surface damp or a microfiber. Alternatively, I have seen the orchid room use small pebbles with great success because they will not take any water from the lecker and protect the root tips as they find their way into the pot. This is something you need to see how the surface of the media behaves in your specific case. In my situation on very dry days, I also miss the surface of my pots just to ensure that the lecker doesn't go bone dry for too long. Watering aerial roots is also an option. Not so much in high humidity climates, but when it comes to average and low humidity climates, misting aerial roots is a great idea. They may not green up, but at least they won't get frazzled because of dry air and stop growing. All in all, when it comes to watering Phalaenopsis orchids, know that they need water when in active growth in order to grow healthy leaves without any kinks or signs of stress to the point that lower leaves start being absorbed. The one thing I always say about watering when it comes to semi-hydroponics, based on your temperatures, you may want to consider leaving your reservoirs empty while maintaining the leca or lava rock damp by draining the reservoir and observing how the pot dries out. During the cooler months of the year, all my reservoirs remain empty, but my lecker never dries out. Now those cutie little minis, let's get to them. Ironically, they are much more water needy than larger ones and all substrates for all humidity levels should be geared towards higher water retention or else you will be hard pressed to keep the little ones happy. Even though some of them have chunky roots, they are thirsty. 
and know that while you have bought a mini Phalaenopsis initially, it could well be that eventually your little one is going to grow into a medium size or large Phalaenopsis. And with that, you will have to adjust your media mix to accommodate for that change of size and adapt the watering accordingly. And one final thing, flushing is also considered a watering for your Phalaenopsis orchids. No matter your media or how you prefer to grow them or your conditions, flushing is fundamental for the health of the climate in the pot. And while I prefer to pour water through my pots, if you do not have the liberty of making a splash fest on a patio, you can soak your pots in plain water, but only fill the pot to 60% of the level of your media. When it comes to these monopodial orchids, you do not want to fill the pot to the top of the media because the danger of getting water into the leaf joints at the base of the stem is super high. The roots in the pot will benefit from that flush without you risking a possible stem rot. Remember that even bark will wick when submerged in water, so having the pot only soaking at 60% compared to the surface of the media is the safest way to avoid any mistakes from happening. How often should you flush? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> at least once after three times fertilizing or supplementing. If your fertilizer concentration is high, anything above 800 parts per million as an example, then I would highly recommend that you flush alternating the fertilizer and supplement with a flush before fertilizing and supplementing again. And that goes across the board, no matter the humidity levels. And the best flush is provided by mother nature, always, all the time. Just so long as it is warm rain with warm temperatures and good air flow, Mother Nature truly comes with the best flush of all. Now, if you've made it this far, I want to thank you for your time. The question was, how do you water Phalaenopsis orchids? So this question cannot be answered without providing as many variables of media mixes, cultural preferences in combination to humidity levels. And I hope I was able to break down what goes into watering Phalaenopsis orchids in such a way that it covers many, many options and that one of those was suitable to you, your lifestyle and setup, as well as the substrate of choice. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition, though, that you stay safe, please. Take care. Bye.